This week, everything broke in our RV, and it was terrible. A lot happened this week. But first, we left El Paso and pressed on toward Austin. Although it was desolate for hours, we did reach Fort Stockton, which was crazily similar to our old stomping grounds of Fairfield, Iowa. We continued eastward, and then... We just saw a wild pig. Maybe a javelina. It looked like a wild black pig. Right off the freeway. Right on the side of the road. I'm just standing there. We spent the next four days in the tiny town of Junction, Texas. This house on the left has a cemetery in their yard. It is the most perfect Sunday. It's 65 degrees out. I'm sitting on a tree in a city park. We found this place on Campendium. That's the website where we go to find boondocking sites. They have sites where you pay to stay as well, RV parks and all that, but they also have places for free. And so that's, we filter the results to find the free boondocking sites. And this was one of them. And we can't believe it. It's this beautiful city park. There's a playground, there's picnic tables, there's grills, and there's a river right here. And it's free. We can stay for three nights and it feels like fall here. It looks like fall. It feels like fall. There's dried leaves on the ground and somebody's either grilling or burning leaves, whatever the smell is, it smells like fall and it's wonderful, but it's also so confusing. I've already been so confused as to what month it is, what season it is. We were at a grocery store the other day and they had like some of their outside plant stuff like they had a sign that said annuals perennials but they didn't actually have any plants out so it looked like they were either setting up or tearing down and i couldn't for the life of me figure out like are we going into summer or are we coming out of summer are they setting up the plants or did they just have the plants and i like couldn't figure out and then i was in walmart and they had valentine's day stuff and i was like okay cool it's almost february so that kind of got my bearings but i've just been so confused with the changes in the weather and the different places and the different climates i have no idea what time of year it is and then now here it's fall so what do you think spoo tried to take spoo for a walk <laughs> wasn't having it <laughs> this is a slight leak from a hydraulic line by the slide. So I'm just making sure it's not leaking too low. We woke up to a beautiful morning, and after doing some work, we went for a walk by the river and to the state park, where we saw some wild turkeys and then, believe it or not, some wild armadillos. An armadillo. An armadillo. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Armadillo, can I get out? Will he attack me? No. I'm getting out. Oh my goodness, that's a real armadillo. <sighs> he looks like Spanky. Oh my goodness. He's like, he's kind of like a pig rabbit. like a lizard, pig, rabbit, turtle. Amazing. We couldn't believe it. It was magical. Later that night, we walked behind our RV and heard some rustling down the bank. It was a giant beaver. We were glad we got outside because the next three days called for rain. We hadn't experienced rain in the RV yet and figured that could be a cozy time to focus on work with no distractions. We woke up to a super overcast day that lasted all day, not an ounce of sun. We watched our solar powered battery dwindle to nothingness. Luckily, we have a generator to use as our backup, but we found out the hard way that it wasn't configured properly to work with our batteries and is basically useless. So our battery was drained to zero, our solar batteries. And then we turned on the engine and that seemed to charge them, but didn't set 100% after a suspiciously short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And now everything seems really wonky. We don't have any power unless the ignition is on or the engine's running. They'd be able to flush toilets or run water, nothing. You can't flush the toilet? No. I mean, you can 
yeah, there's nothing to flush it with. No water would come out. Right. And all this is happening because it's been overcast, and so our solar hasn't charged. And I hope nothing is screwed up from running that engine and charging so fast. Yeah, that was a little suspicious. So we alternated between having no power to having very little power before everything shut off again. And we knew there were more overcast days to come. We checked the weather in our next two stops ahead, but it was the same. There was nothing we could do but wait for the sun. But our troubles didn't end there. It's 4.09 in the morning and it's raining. Earlier, like during the day, it was just a very light drizzle. Um, but then like as soon as we were in bed, it started raining quite hard. Um, and now Toby has woken up because apparently there's a leak. So uh, this is Toby's side of the bed and it's all wet by his feet. This um, air conditioning vent is apparently leaking. So Toby is up on the roof in the rain trying to cover it with something. Can you do anything? Sorry, house. I think now that I know the leak is on the side, I'm going to go adjust that tarp a little bit. Luckily, Toby's handiwork did the trick. Between the air conditioning unit and the roof, there's a gasket that kind of goes right around here. And then there's four bolts underneath this vent grate that were not tight enough maybe to compress the gasket so that rain wouldn't get in. Because last night we had a bunch of water right along this edge. And this wasn't leaking last night, so maybe this side's fine. Mm -hmm. This side was looser when I tightened down the, the bolts. So I compressed it hopefully not too much, but just enough. How was it waking up with wet feet? Um, confusing. <laughs> Does the leak run all the way up there? No, there's just like one drip coming from right here. Okay, so we have a second leak, but it's small. Yeah. After all that, we had had enough of Junction. It was time to move on to Fredericksburg, an adorable German-influenced tourist town. This town has money and was a nice mix of country casual and high-end. All the shop fronts were unique and so well maintained, and despite being their so-called slow season, this little town is thriving. We got burgers at a great bistro downtown and enjoyed the sunny 72 degree afternoon. I've said this about every place we've visited so far, but I could really live here. The day we left, it was raining lightly, which made our drive through Texas Hill Country all the cozier and more scenic. We passed some really fancy wineries and rustic peach orchards. It was so charming to pass by goats and sheep, and I will reiterate that I would absolutely live here. The last hour of our journey was on a very narrow road that was quite stressful for Toby to drive. But where we ended up made it all worth it. Stay tuned next week to see where this windy, hilly, narrow road takes us.